Kokomoto's test series, that's what it is. It's the second test match between Zimbabwe and New Zealand, and we're coming to you from Queen's Sports Club. Zimbabwe had won the toss and elected to, to bat on a wicket that looks pretty flat. In changes to the Zimbabwe side, one changed the opener down in Arari Neil. Ferreira has been dropped, and uh, Dion Ibrahim, who batted number three, will now open the innings with uh, Brandon Taylor. So to open the bowling from the city end will be Shane Bond. Beg your pardon, the airport end rather. City end is the stand where the commentators are sitting. And uh, right arm fast medium bowler. Shane Bond bowled very quickly and uh, good line and length. And good morning to you, Sykes. Morning, Jeremy. Very important that Zimbabwe get a good start off to you today. Johnny Bram and Brendan Taylor out early before the New Zealand fielders. Very keen to start the day well. Immediately, there's uh, looked as if he wanted to leave that one alone, and then played it in the end. It's important for Zimbabwe to get off to a solid start here. They've been far too tentative. The batsmen have got themselves into all sorts of trouble in Harare, and they were well and truly beaten there. They have to make up here in this test. 46 wickets in his 12 uh, test matches thus far. Shane Bond. Wraps it on the pad and given second ball of the morning and not for one and drama unfolds once again at the Queen Sports Club. Worst possible start, full and straight from Shane Bond. Dionne Brown trapped on the crease. Plum LBW second ball, the worst possible start for Zimbabwe. Dionne Brown goes without scoring. Zimbabwe zero for one. Stuart Carlisle now coming to the crease to join Brandon Taylor. Not for one. 37 matches, an average of 27.7. Highest score of 118. And, uh, a big score is needed from him today. But just an uh, interesting uh, bit of stats here that in 49 innings prior to this game, Dion Ibrahim been out 16 times leg before wicket. Uh, struggling early on with the pace of Shane Bond here today. It's again full and straight from Shane Bond. Johnny Bryan beaten with the pace through the air and he has caught right on the crease. It's a good start for New Zealand, but the worst possible start from Zimbabwe. Yes, absolutely. Immediately under pressure. Second ball of the morning. He was trapped leg before wicket. And uh, that's not a very good start. And immediately the momentum. You start a test match, you lose an early wicket. Oh, it's a good delivery. This one just coming into him. And uh, off the mark, uh, Carlisle. First run of the morning. Uh, there's a couple of back injuries here in the Zimbabwe team. And the one thing I think about people coming back from injury, they tend to get much stronger and fitter, look after themselves a lot better. And with the modern trends and modern trainers around, fast bowlers have the best opportunity to come back better than they were. Oh, so again, hit him on the pad and give him... The second success now, and Zimbabwe in all sorts of trouble at three for two. Well, well, well. Really playing again the wrong line and getting himself into trouble. Again, the same thing. Same as Dionne Bryan. Pace through the air. Trapped on the crease. A little bit of swing back. Shambon, that's plumb in front of middle stump. Stuart Collard goes for one. Zimbabwe is struggling here. Three for two. Early, early trouble. Zimbabwe are at the moment with their backs to the wall. Incoming batsman, Amatul Mazakatsa, batted well. Youngest batsman ever to score 100. Best score of 119, average of 28 in his 13 matches. Really has the talent. And uh, 
There's a big responsibility that now rests on his shoulders. Shane Bond, early success for New Zealand and Zimbabwe are reeling at three for two. Let's shave the outside of the off stump. It's a brilliant start again from Sh Shane Bond. This one's nicely driven. And that will go away to the boundary. And the first four for the morning will be signaled in fine style by Mr. Darrell here. It's a confident shot there from Brendan Taylor. Reaching out full and wide. Willing to throw his hands out there and crack the ball through the covers for four. Here we see it. It's a bit wide. It's full. Not too much. Not a lot of swing. And he's... Bang that through the covers for four. The good thing is he got the foot movement going towards the ball. And uh, the placement was good. That a little bit quicker zipping through, carrying nicely through to Brendan McCallum. Back live. Seven. Runs on the board now for the loss of two wickets. Hooked in the air. Yeah. Well, he went for the trap, didn't he? The word the third Zimbabwean wicket. And uh, I'm afraid to say this is not good at all. A start from the Zimbabweans. New Zealand are totally on top. It's a terrible shot from Hamilton. Mr. Kaza banged in short. He's gone for the hook shot, not in control. And a looping catch to Chris Martin and fine leg. And Shane Bond has his third wicket. Zimbabwe are crumbling. Seven for three. Yes, Mazakatsa. Only six balls in his stay of ten minutes. And as uh, Sykes earlier alluded to, you cannot play shots like that so early on in the innings. Seven for three. Back live as uh, Craig Wishart now joins Brandon Taylor. Bond. First ball, good one up. Well, Shane Bond now has taken 49 wickets in Test cricket. So he needs one more to get to 50. Well, he started really well here against some bobbins. And again, he's spanked that in short. Hamilton Masek has it gone for the hook shot, not in control. Instead, looping catch to Chris Martin at fine leg. Shane Bond, a very happy bowler. Three wickets and three overs. Again, the short delivery. Wisha does the right thing and just ducks underneath it. No! So well played. Got forward there. Bang on target again from the bowler. But uh, played this time confidence. That's Craig Wisha. 27 matches. Average of 22.7. You see, that's what you want. The older statesman in the team. Best score of 114 to have an average of 30 and more. Well, that's what Mike Hazeman spoke earlier about this morning. It's important that one of the senior players, two of them have already gone. Johnny Bryan, Stuart Carlisle, Craig Wishart, really needs to dig deep here and make a score for Zimbabwe. I think it's important that uh, Zimbabwe don't just think of survivals. It's very important that they get the singles going, get the run rate going. It will help the, the batsman's confidence out there. Ne neatly ticked away. Yes. We'll get two, yeah. Swap play by Craig Wishart. He gets off the mark. That's a good shot. That's a wait. That's four runs. Nicely played. Now this is the sort of batting I think that Zimbabwe will be looking for as the day progresses. Brendan Taylor has been a good study of defence and then when the opportunity has come like this, he's put it away confidently. He's a sort of player who will stick around. He won't be too extravagant. He'll uh, treat every ball on its merit. 
try and get behind the line and play the odd nice drive. First boundary of the over for back foot. The second one beautifully played through the covers off the front. 21 for three. Beautifully played. Slightly over pitch, a little bit wide as well, but a lovely drive for four. Genuine half volley. Greg Wisher on this occasion, man on the drive or not. He's put it away quite beautifully. But three slips and two gullies. The gullies in particular are square. I've seen once or twice with Shart looking to drive and uh, not quite getting that balance uh, as fast forward as uh, he should and being caught in the, uh, the square of the two gullies. It's a nice pull shot. That is very well controlled. Well, he wasn't getting underneath this one, Craig Wishart, on this occasion. Decided to get the pull out. And he has put it away very convincingly. Doesn't look like he's prepared to really hang about. If it's going to present itself, he's going to play shots. And I have to say, I don't think there's anything wrong with that attitude right now. Defence didn't really help in Harari occupying the crease. To no ball. A bit of exercise for uh, Big Daryl here. It's a nice shot again from Wishart, and the outfield is fairly quick, and it's gone for four. So that's uh, four for the shot and one for the no ball. This is the risk of not carrying a backward point in a defensive position. He's up catching. Darrell here convinced on that occasion. And so was Craig Wishart. Superbly played. He's now gone to 19 of only 25 balls. And 10 runs off this over so far. One ball remaining. Bit of extra bounce, but uh, nicely ridden by Wishart. 38 for three. in the gap. Tentative, that one. Brendan Taylor still gets across for one. Was unsure whether to go for the drive or or not. Just checked his shot at the end. This has been the undoing of the Zimbabweans, I must have. They've Scotty. just gone. They just pushed half-heartedly at it. And uh, the loss of the wickets this morning was also because of the two LBWs. That's right, gone through the slip court and and it's going to go for four. Just dangling the bat, Craig Wishart. Just two men in that cordon. First slip, a little bit wide, and then a gully. So four runs. Any runs, very welcome to the Zimbabweans. Come on, boys. It was a good year. The angling of the bat and the placement. Look at it. Just opening the face nicely. Knowing exactly where the fielders were on the offside, and it did pierce that field. Oh. Important to have your plan set before you go out to bat as a batsman. That's a good shot, a very good shot. It's pitched up, it's at the stumps. Brandon Taylor, not too much movement, didn't have to, just brought the bat down straight and it's gone back straight past the bowler for four. Look at his position. Very good. Oh, played it lovely. That's not the easiest of shots to play. But uh, just look, playing the checker drive there. Look at that. It's using the pace of the delivery. Wonderful shot. And isn't there a better place on a cricket field to play a shot like that? And that's up the ground. Lovely shot. He's going to get four more. This time rather for two. It is coming off the outside edge of the bat. But it's four runs all the same, and he'll take him. Takes him to 24, level with his partner at the other end, Craig Wishart. Well, there's no third man in position. There's three slips in position and a gully. And he's got it in that fourth slip region, all on the carpet. It's angled it and deliberately played it in that direction. He knew once it's gone through that gap, go all the way to the boundary for four.
He's nice and tight, uh, Pommy. I like the way he's compact. He uh, gets into line and uh, doesn't do anything flashy. And again, through the slip cordon. This one may be hauled in. No, he won't be. Kept him interested. It's four more to end the over. 59 for three. Starts off with a wide one and it's put away. Craig Wishart seizing upon the opportunity. Well executed, well over the ball. All along the ground for four. This was a bit wide from Martin. And as I said, Wishart now being at the crease for some time. And any batsman in the world should dispatch that bad delivery for four, which he did in fine style. Nicely rolling the risks. He's gone for it, and what a catch! That's a very good catch. Wishart is gone. Oh, this one, he just tried, oh, look how far away from his body he's played that one, and then got himself caught in the gully. A very, very good catch. Those chances are sharp, and uh, Nathan is still doing well to catch that. 65 for 4. Zimbabwe right. captain Tatenda Taibu comes to the wicket in his 22nd match. A score of 153 against Bangladesh. An average of below 30 at 27.6. The reason he's in is because Craig Wishart played this shot. He got an outside edge looking to go through the covers. And what a catch! Shot caught at gully. Not getting across to the delivery. Not right behind it and the angle is undoing. The ball just carried on going across him. Didn't quite get behind it and that's a really good catch from Nathan Astell. If you play away from the body like that, you are bound to play the ball in the air. That's exactly what happened there. There's no weight. It's transferred more back. And when, once your weight is off your feet, then uh, you do tend to uh, hit the ball in the air. Haven't got that power. 65 for four. We've had just over an hour and a half of play in the second test match. Zimbabwe have already lost four wickets. Three to Shane Bond. Three for 11, his return. And uh, Franklin, who is in the attack. One for 16 off six. Squeezed back with a square. And another boundary to Taylor. It's a good shot by Brendan Taylor. Full and wide from James Franklin. And he's just squeezed that through. Gully and point to the boundary for four. Not finding that swing that was... Available in Harari, the ball just sliding across, Britain Taylor squeezing that through for four. Warm day today as well, so it'll bake quite a bit. On square for four, nicely played. A little bit wide from Franklin, also a bit over pitched. It's a good shot again, a bit wide from... James Franklin, Brendan Taylor, not scared to throw his hands out there and smash it through the cover. It's been a good aspect of his batting, being positive against anything his thought is loose. It's a good square drive. There's a nick on his way. So Shane Bond has struck again. Agent Bond has now got his fourth wicket and they're in big trouble, Zimbabwe. They've lost two in short time after losing three for just seven runs earlier today. Short and wide. Brendan Taylor flashing a thin edge to Brendan McCullum. And Zimbabwe lose their fifth wicket. And Bond picks up his 50th wicket in Test Match Cricket. 
So Brendan Taylor now departs. 37 he made, faced 67 balls in Barn Week, 74 for five. It's the former Zimbabwe captain Heath Streak at the crease now with only uh, about eight minutes to go before lunch, playing in his 63rd game, which, by the way, is uh, equal with Andy Flower and representing Zimbabwe in test matches. Only one man is ahead of them, and that's Grant Flower, who's uh, stopped on 67. There's a neck. Another one for Bond. First ball. Heath Street got a first baller in the first test match in Harare. He's on his way quickly again, and Bond has now got five for 11. Top delivery. First up, Heath Street looking for the in-swing. The ball carrying on down the line. The thin edge straight through to the keeper. And major disappointment for Heath Street. He goes for naught. 74 for six now. Keith De Bengua is the next man in, making his test uh, debut today. And of course he's uh, going to be under pressure. It is a hat-trick ball. A couple of wickets to Shane Bond. Getting rid of uh, Taylor and then Streak. They lost three wickets for seven runs this morning, Zimbabwe. They've now just lost three wickets for nine runs. With a partnership of 58 in between those. Has played 27 first-class matches, De Bengua. But enormous pressure now. It's not a bad one first up. De Bengua knew that it'd be uh, swinging back in in a fraction, but uh, got right behind it. But it's been a very impressive comeback spell from Shane Bond. That's too short, and it's put away. Typical post-lunch ball is from Batori. Not scared on occasion, just to get it up there. However, that is very well played by the Zimbabwean captain. He's a short guy. Often it's very difficult for a slow bowler to find your length to the shorter guys. Shouts of catch it, and that's gone through the slip cord. And four more runs for Chuatas. Good bowling. Just outside that off stump, asking Tatenda Taibu to play the drive. Well, he's willing and obliging. Those two men in the deep gully region just there for this particular shot. There you go. The field is set so that he can have a go. He's had a go and a good go. Six for Dabengwa. How about that to start off your scoring in a test match? Well, I can't see no reason why he shouldn't. It's full enough. But that sort of length, no man back. Not even one at deep square. We looked at the field in the previous over. But Daniel Vittori, the question is, yeah, will he throw it up again? The field stayed the same. Oh. This time through the offside. Just gently pushed. Got to the pit pitch of the ball. Tabengo and they've got back for threes. Very quick between the wickets. And Tatenda Tai was quick too. I'll give him some confidence that Keith Dabengwa. He's got onto that. It's been a little bit short. And Dabengwa has climbed into it. It's gone for four. Zimbabwe bring up their 100 as well. 102 for six. Well... Something's happened at the bowling crease there. But Tori not quite letting that go in the way that he'd like. I think his studs got caught in his bowling stride and his delivery stride. But Dabengwa says thank you very much and hits it for four. Well, I think Dabengwa's giving him the dummy here. And Tori tried to drop, pull, uh, pull it down a bit. And, oh and in the end, he's just rocked back and put it away beautifully. But when he hits it, it stays hit. 
He's gutsy for a little guy when he turned up in international cricket. Many guys ran up and bombed him and hit him. And he just knew that he had to ride that and play through it. That's a good shot. It's short. It's not too quick because the ball's a bit older. The pitch is a good one too. He's got nicely behind it. No fielders back there. Four more. Very good shot. Shane Bond into his fifth uh, over here after lunch and probably starting to tire. Well picked up in the end. Thanks, Pommy. Nice little partnership, this. 39 off 64 balls. That's nicely played. That is a very good shot indeed. It's gone for six runs. That is beautifully struck. I like his intent today to tend to Taibu. She has played positively, hasn't he? And uh, lovely getting to the pitch of it and uh, just hitting it nicely for maximum. Clean strike. Gone again. Straight up along the ground this time, eventually for four. No, he's not been afraid to take him on. We saw uh, Keith. Tabengwa also hitting Vittori for a six. He looks uh, also as if he's full of runs here today on debut. Hey boy, so again, a good hit. Just freed the arms. In his tenth over now, Danny Vittori hasn't got a stick. He's uh, got a bit of punishment here. Ten runs off two balls. Stand worth 49 now, just uh, 67 deliveries. Got him. Bowled him. Martin back into the attack. How often this happens that uh, Stephen Fleming makes a bowling change. The bowler comes back into the attack and picks up a stick straight away. Well, he really played the wrong line. Instead of playing it straighter, tried to go across the line here and got castled. Look at it again. Now, look where the batsman's going. Looking to hit through the mid-wicket area. Now, played the wrong line there totally. And uh, should have played straighter. The Bengua out for 17, 123 for 7. Hundred and twenty-three for seven now. Bless him aweary. At the crease, just playing his eighth test match, and uh, the averages take a nice little dive here with uh, Bless him aweary, Creamer and also Christopher and Porfo. So uh, it shouldn't be long, providing they uh, stay on strike and tend to Tybu, who I'm sure will be uh, even more aggressive now. Shouldn't be long before New Zealand wrap this innings up. If you can't read too much into that average, more down the tail, blessing weary, and uh, bowled well at uh, Harari in the first test. That's uh, the second of the two gullies, the fine of the two. You'll notice that he's uh, probably about two paces behind the square gully. Just look at this wicket, totally playing the wrong line. Bingo! You miss, I hit. I just wonder how much uh, thinking was done out there between Tatenda Taibu and the debutante. Obviously, Tatenda Taibu's got to uh, provide as much encouragement and uh, an insight, if you like, as he possibly can, as the skipper as well and the senior partner. That was the one he was looking for, and he's got it away nice and straight. That's well played. Chases on in vain. See, there we see Tatenda Taibu. That shot he played where the body weight was going forward over the ball with power and that allows you to hit it on the ground for four just look at that weight transferred beautifully played oh textbook stuff lovely to me the shot of the day look at that oh beautiful the extension of the arm and the hands and this is beautifully driven from Tatenda Taibu that takes him on to 49 one short of his 50 149 for seven. Very much a patience game at the moment. Yeah. Nathan has to packed off side field. Just trying to see if Tatenda Taibu will be lulled into an error. Not on this occasion. He's picked it out beautifully. That's four. And he's 50. Well, he may be a small guy, but when he hits it, it stays hit. 
And that's his seventh and one of his best in test cricket. It's a beautiful shot to go to 50. Bit fuller, bit straight out. Captain not scared to go across the line. A pick up over square leg for four and to tend to tie, but he goes to a well-deserved and very well played 50. It's a top shot by the captain. Brave shot to go to a well-deserved milestone. Well, he follows it up. Well, it's probably the shot of the inning so far. Beautifully driven wide of cover. I get the feeling that Tatenda Tab is really enjoying this. Our captain is dug in hard. And after getting to his milestone, gets another one a bit full, a bit wider, and he's crashed it through the covers. Oh, this is well driven by Blessing Maweri. Franklin has struggled today at times with his length and line and neatly put away. Often when you're looking for that bit of swing and looking to bring it back into the right hander, if it doesn't swing, it just goes straight on. Here comes a half volley, and that is well driven. That's a good shot. It's short and it's wide. And blessing Mawira hasn't tried to hit it too hard. He's just made sure that it's gone to the ground. All along the ground for four. And it's a simple lesson again. Time at the crease. You get out there, you make sure you survive for a while. Blessing Mawiri has a uh, career average of just over five in international cricket. He's now faced 52 deliveries. That's his second four. And it really was very nicely played. Time at the crease. Confidence grows. You look to play the odd shot. Pick up the odd boundary. Well done. Shots of catch it, but it's gone in the gap. He's tried to let that go. Blessing Mawiri. He'll be happy it's gone for four. 175 for seven. Good shot. Very good contact. When he hit it, he called wait. But just so that he could see whether he beat the man at backward point, and he did comfortably. I just think maybe it's the, the one over too many now for Nathan Astle. He's in his six. He normally doesn't uh, bowl this many in a spell. It's just a bit of a, uh, a partnership breaker, if you like. But that's a nice shot. 9-4 now for Tatenda Taibu. hear them shout they're very convinced and Mark Benson not moved interesting to see the replay the sound from the stump microphone it was a soft sound it sounded like pad yeah I thought it was thigh pad bless me where he didn't move either he just stood there in the crease it went leg side again I don't think there's too many I think just uh, flicked that thigh pad as it went through and uh, not cleanly taken by McCullum It's the last ball before T and it's gone for four. It's a full toss outside off stump. Tatenda Taibo says thank you very much. Guides it through the slip region and it's gone for four. So T it is at 188 for seven. And this last boundary means they almost scored a run a minute for the last two hours in the second session. Which uh, really is uh, a pretty good, very good recovery after uh, being decimated by the Kiwis in the first uh, session this morning <laughs> it's a good shot that will run away for four but Apish has enough on it to beat the fielder the end of the over 194 for seven cut and that will go away for four no third man in position it's through the uh, gully area Bless him aware anything short, they've latched onto it. What a pleasure as well. No need to run for this. It's all gains in Bobby's way right now. It's bisected both those fielders there, slap bang in the middle. He's really given it the kitchen sink, hasn't he? Cut away. And that will have the beating of the fielder. Was a man in the deep. 
the Tendo Taibo. It's just less than that, short outside the off stump, and gets the punishment it deserves. Well, he was almost set up in this position by Stephen Fleming for exactly this. He's not in a conventional third man position, more deep backward point. Well, I guess Taibo really getting all of it there. Short! It's in the air! Will the fielder get there? He does! And Taibo is at last out and Bond takes his sixth wicket. And that is his best. So far for New Zealand taking six wickets in an innings. And to go with it, the commentators cursed just when we were talking about record partnerships. But he was set up for this duck tender Taibu. We saw it coming on this occasion. Very well taken in the end. And that's what strike bowling is all about. Shane Bond yet again does the business for New Zealand. But it's ended a wonderful innings by the captain. Full credit to him. Backs to the wall. He's come in and played a blind here for Zimbabwe. He's gone for 76. 2-11 for 8. Graham Creamer. He joins uh, Blessing Mawiri. And uh, 21 runs thus far with an average of 2.1. Best score of 12. Best thing for him is to hang around and uh, just rotate the strike so that Blessing Mawiri. Now there's two slips, three gullies. The end of the uh, 68th over, Bond has six wickets, and uh, this is how Creamer arrived at the wicket, because this had unearthed earlier. Probably getting a bit tucked up here as well to tend to Taibu. It's a big field, it's, that's a long boundary. With Tori down. driven down the ground, lovely shot that will run away for four, lovely shot. Well, this has to be hit. I was just going to say, I just wonder if this is going to... The fall of uh, Taibu's wick is going to change the way Mawiri looks to play. Catch! Oh, catch it was the shout. Just when you said he brought some respectability and it was a good innings. Blessing Mawiri looking to go over the top. And it's mistimed that and it's just looped over to mid on. So another wicket goes down and once again... Wicked falls rather than one just going, another in quick succession. Uh, a bit of an adventurous shot from Blessing. Probably looking to go 250, trying to push the pace. And it's just lobbed that one to middle. And Nathan Astle taking an easy catch. But an into very good innings from Blessing Marie. He's gone for 42s and Bobby 217 for nine. Christopher Van Poffel comes in. He'll be on strike. Facing Daniel Vittori. Just one wicket left standing in the Zimbabwe innings. Oh! He comes in because Blessing Mawiri decided to get a little bit more adventurous than he has been. Changed the formula that was working. That's gone through the slips. Just wide of the man at second slip off. Chris and Paul was outside edge. More runs for Zimbabwe. Runs to him, Paul for two. He goes to seven. Uh, not pushing too hard at this one, Chris and Paul. Soft hands, just guiding it through the vacant third slip for another four. Substitute fielder. He's on for Shane Bond. James Franklin's also gone off. They've had to bowl a few more overs. And they did in that first test match. Had to work a little bit more. The other man on is Big Jacob Orham. Grown the hair a little bit. Not quite fitting in the cap. Prize of catch it and up goes the finger. That's it. It's all over. The innings is now finished. Dan Vittori has uh, toiled away and uh, has got himself his second wicket, 256. His return in the end, but uh, Zimbabwe, after winning the toss and electing to bat in ideal conditions, 
All out for 231. This is the last man to go. Just jamming the bat certainly onto the foot and hitting the pad. And up in the finger from uh, umpire Mark Benson. So it's all over for Zimbabwe. And they can look back and uh, call this a very indifferent performance, although it was quite a good recovery when there were six down in the first two hours of play today, just losing the one wicket in the second session. But it hasn't taken too long, of course, to wrap things up. All out for 231. And Christopher Mpufu goes for seven. And if we look back at the batting card, problems right at the start. Abraham, Carlisle, Mazakadza going cheaply. Taylor stuck around for 67 balls for his 37, including eight fours. Wishart was playing nicely until he was dismissed. A brilliant catch in the gully off uh, Franklin by Nathan Astle for 30. To tender Taibu was the top scorer with a very, very well played. 76 of 157 deliveries, including 11 fours and one six. And a good stand from Blessing Mawari, who uh, up until now has averaged five at this level. But he got 42 off 93 balls, seven fours in that knock as well. And then, of course, uh, Krima and Mpufu Krima not out seven at the end. So 231 all out. And as we know, the game is all about partnerships. We the five-day game or the shorter version. And right at the start, basically nothing for Zimbabwe. Then a stand of 58 between Wishart and Taylor got things a little bit back on track. And uh, Taibu and uh, Dabuganga, 49. Good stand. That one, Taibu and uh, Blessing Mawari, 88. That was the pick of them. But uh, in the end, it was fairly quickly wrapped up. And there's one man who will be very tired and very pleased in the change room for New Zealand. And that'll be Shane Bond. 17 overs, five maidens, six for 51. Brilliant stuff from him. And two wickets to Danny Vittori, including the last one. And a wicket apiece to Franklin, who toiled well. And also Chris Martin. So the bowling was pretty well spread. Vittori obviously doing uh, the most of the bowling. 27 overs, nine maidens. But uh, the seamers will still be reasonably fresh. And uh, they'll be very pleased with the work uh, that they have done. So Heath Trick it is, who's going to be starting proceedings, looking to pick up an early wicket. It's a little bit of a terror session here for uh, the Kiwis. Nine overs they have to face before uh, the 90 overs are up. James Marshall, who's just playing his fifth game, will be facing the first delivery. Four slips and a short leg. And a bit of movement as well. So we can watch this quite carefully because Heath Trick is uh, one of uh, the bowlers around the world in any conditions. We'll generally get a little bit of swing. And we can expect that uh, there will be a bit for him with this brand new ball, but if they see it out tonight, which will be their goal, I don't think there'll be too much swing tomorrow morning, and uh, soon that ball will be quite roughed up due to the abrasive nature of this uh, track and the dry nature of this track. And uh, it'll be a lot easier to bat tomorrow. 206 wickets in his test match career at an average of 28.4, economy rate of uh, just over two and a half. And he bowled with a very nice shape in that first test match in Harare. A little bit over pitched and beautifully driven. That's a very nice shot indeed from Lou Vincent to get off the mark. This level, no room for error. You see, he bowled good lengths. Maybe just wide this time, just pitching, pitching it a bit fuller. And uh, beautifully driven by Lou Vincent. Streak again. Oh, that's not too far away, but it wouldn't have counted. He's overstepped. It's another no ball. There's uh, six overs and four balls remaining now, or five o'clock. It's gone through the slips. I'm not sure it carried anyway. It was on the bounce. I don't think we can put that down as a chance, although we'll remember in the first uh, test match in Harare, there were three opportunities of genuine edges that didn't carry. So the slips need to be the right distance. I wonder if they're not too far apart, Daisy. If you look at that slip cordon, look at that. How far is they are from each other. And normally, you'd like to see them closer. Two and a half areas, I guess, that Heathstreak is working on now with Lou Vincent. One is the ball swinging away, of course, and getting a standard nick in the slips, or maybe caught behind, as fast bowlers like to do, or seam bowlers like to do in the ball swinging. The other is that off-cutter off just coming back a little bit, and maybe the inside edge under the thigh pad. That is a great shot. Slightly short, again an indication of uh, how good this track is here at uh, the Queen Sports Club in Bulawayo. He picked that up quite quickly. You've got to get into position and that's what Lou Vincent did very well. Just look at this. Thumped it in short, in position he was. Total in control. Rolled the wrist nicely and uh, rolled away for four. Very good shot. He got inside the shot, you see. When you're pulling the ball, make sure you're inside the shot. Exactly what he did, positioning himself very well.
Beautifully controlled again from Lou Vincent. That's a very nice stroke. Again, no flourish, but good timing. Uh, overcompensating now. Bowled the shorter ball. Got pulled away for four. Then overpitching this one. And Lou Vincent uh, playing a lovely off drive. Oh, just a lovely off drive, isn't it? Full face of the bat. Show the maker's name. There we go. Lovely drive. And so far, 10 runs off the over. Big shot from Taibu, but again, just going leg side. Nicely played. And it's eluded uh, Creamer. The man out there. He will track it down. So uh, three runs, the result for Lou Vincent. Well, I could see he did strive to get Yorker length. Swinging into the batsman, but equally well played. Grabbing hands of the man at short leg. But uh, it was too quick for him. Then a bit of a let up in the field by Creamer. Quite like the way that uh, Hamilton Mazakats is uh, operating at short leg. He stays down all the time. That one just going through his legs and through his hands. Big shout from Heath Streak. I don't think it straightened enough. No, it didn't. Daryl here agrees with me that it was uh, also just going down leg side. Marshall is lucky here, but the ball was drifting outside leg side. He has a tendency to just play around those pads a little bit, James Marshall. But uh, Mr. Hare quite clearly saying missing leg. Let's have a look at it. Yes, just sliding down. Good decision. Got about uh, 14 minutes left in the day's play. Nice shot through the covers. No point chasing that one. Full and wide. Marshall did the right thing to dispatch it for four. That sort of length is drivable. And he did the correct thing. He's driving poor four. Get into the pitch of it. Lovely balance. Glorious stroke. It's one to complete uh, 90 overs in the day's play. But we've probably got uh, three to go to the finish. Very good catch. That is nicely taken. Heath Streaker struck. It was uh, pretty well hit as well by uh, James Marshall. But straight to the man in that uh, slips cord. And sharp catch taken. And they've got their first exactly what they wanted and exactly what the doctor ordered for Zimbabwe Carlisle taking a stunning catch look at also just playing away from the body outside edge Carlisle doing magnificently well and hit streak knows he's got his man and Zimbabwe will be very very happy that they've nipped out at least one wicket here this evening putting the pressure back on New Zealand 34 for one One marshal goes, another one arrives. So they're not uh, using the night watchman at this stage. I thought uh, this was about the time that if one was going to be used, it would be Daniel Vittori who'd be striding to the crease. But no, Hamish Marshall's there, just playing in his ninth game. Very good average so far at Test Match Cricket. And streak again. Short ball first up. But a very sharp catch taken by Stewie Carlisle. Nice control again. Outfield's been fairly brisk all day today, and that's going to run away for another boundary. Good shot. Although uh, Zimbabwe have taken a wicket, the runs are becoming thick and fast, as you said. Oh, that run rate, 5.1. Very high. And uh, they've other bowled to full and too many no balls. Ready. Five bolt. Look at this one. Overpitched. Bread and butter for any uh, batsman. Beautiful control. Fact of the matter, you still got to hit the shot. And the execution. Oh, there could be trouble. Is trouble. What a terrible mix up that is. There's confusion in the middle now as to whether Hamish Marshall actually left his crease. If he left his crease, then he's the one that has to go. 
Umpire Daryl Hare is actually on the walkie-talkie to uh, Kevin Barber, the third umpire, to find out exactly what happened. But one of them has been run out by about uh, 22 yards here. Is it Lou Vincent or is it Hamish Marshall? Lou Vincent was charging down. He was wanting the one, and I'm not sure Hamish Marshall moved at all. But if he did go out of his crease, then he's the one that departs. Well, they'd be livid in that New Zealand change room at this late stage of the game. And uh, a waste of a wicket. He was outside his crease. But did they cross? They did there. So I think you're going to find that uh, Hamish Marshall is the man that's out. Hamish Marshall left his crease. Then he hesitated a bit. Took another step or two and Lou Vincent kept going. So I think they crossed whilst Hamish Marshall was outside his crease. So I think he's the one that uh, is going to be sent on his way. It is stumps, whatever uh, happens. So an eventful end for the day's play. We're not too sure yet who the man is that uh, is going. He's looking a little bit guilty to me at the moment, uh, Hamish Marshall. But uh, in my view, he's the one that uh, should be out. Oh, be gross disappointment whoever's run up because grave mistake. Let's have a look at this again. Plays the ball. Now he's not set off for the run yet. Now he sets off. Uh, this crease, have they crossed? That's the big question. Now he sets off. I think he's crossed. I think you are quite right. Mike Aisman. <laughs> it was just a bit of a dart at the, the end there to make sure both batsmen got their uh, bats <laughs> over the crease. <laughs> and we'll see here that uh, they have obviously crossed and uh, Lou Vincent has made the ground in the end, if you like, before Hamish Marshall. Marshall. Very, very strange shot, that one. A strange freeze. You don't often see that in a game of cricket. So uh, here's the... Uh, the consultation with the third umpire, Kevin Barber. Let's have a look and uh, see what the call is, but I think it's Marshall who uh, is gone. And there's the confirmation. Lou Vincent is still standing there. Hamish Marshall has uh, walked to the change room, so he's the man that has run out by about 22 yards in the end. So disappointment for him and disappointment for New Zealand late in the day. Gone for 13, unlucky for some. Yes, he'll be disappointed. He looked quite in good shape. Here's another look at uh, what happened. There was uh, obviously no initial call, I would guess. A bit of a misfield. They say never run on a misfield. And here's proof again. And Lou Vincent was tearing down from the on striker's end. The underarm throw from Detender Tybee. There was some good calling from Blessing Mawery saying, get it to my end or something like that. And uh, the bales were taken off. In fact, both bales were taken off as it rebound off the shoulder and came down on top of the stumps as well. At a very, very disappointing, disappointing end for New Zealand losing their second wicket at the stroke of uh, stumps so in the session 91 runs five wickets falling for 91 runs and that run rate at uh, 3.4 at the moment new zealand going at 5.1 but uh, tomorrow it's going to be stephen fleming he's going to be coming out to face uh, the start of uh, proceedings and of course it's hamish marshall the two marshall twins in fact who are back in the pavilion so to tend to can be pretty pleased with his individual performance he batted very well today and zimbabwe were in a lot of trouble at three because down for just seven runs and in the end, they made 231. Taibu, 76. Bless him aware. He played nicely for 42. Taylor, 37. But Bond, 6 for 51. Bowled brilliantly. Bowled very quickly and with some swing earlier today. And New Zealand now in reply. It was just a little bit of a, a mini terror session for them. Just nine overs to face. And 48 for two. With Lou Vincent not out on 20 at this stage. And the Marshall Twins have gone. And Heath Streak, 1 for 27. So that's close of play on day one of the second test match. New Zealand are 48 for two at this stage. You can join us tomorrow at 10 to 10 local time.